Hello everyone and welcome to another math tutorial. In this video we're going to start a brand new chapter on matrices. And to get us started we're going to go over just the basics of a matrix, what it is, some vocabulary associated with it, and some really simple basic operations in this video. So a matrix is simply a rectangular array of numbers. Generally, you're gonna see the numbers inserted inside of brackets, although some texts might use a large set of parentheses uh, to enclose your array of numbers. Uh, so here's an example of what a matrix might look like. Uh, now some vocabulary associated with the matrix that you're going to need to know. Okay, so within the matrix, we've got a few things that we need to know. Uh, first off, the numbers that go horizontally uh, in the matrix are the rows. And in this example right here, we've got two rows. The numbers that come down vertically within the matrix, those are called columns. And in this particular matrix, we have four columns. Now, each individual number within the matrix, we call those entries. Um, so this number 12 is an entry. It's the entry that's in the second row, fourth column, okay? Now, the other thing that we need to talk about real quick is the size of a matrix. The size of a matrix is always reported as its number of rows by its number of columns. Uh, you can think of the size as like the dimensions of the matrix. So this particular matrix here that we're using as our example uh, has two rows and four columns. So I would say that its size is a two by four matrix. Okay, let's jump right into an example problem. Here we've got a matrix. Uh, typically matrices are named with capital letters. So I've called this matrix A right here. Uh, first question is how many rows are in the matrix? So remember rows go across horizontally. So how many horizontal lists of numbers do we see? There's one, two, three, four, and five. So this matrix has five rows. How many columns are in the matrix? The columns go vertically. So here's a column of numbers and here is a column of numbers. We have two columns. And then what is the size of the matrix? We're always gonna list the number of rows by the number of columns. So this is a five by two matrix. Okay, this next slide is just a continuation of the last one. Notice we have the same exact matrix A. Just gave us a new slide for these new questions here. And actually it's just a single question with a few different responses. Uh, what are the entries, which means what are the numbers, at the following locations? So we see here A sub 32. Uh, the entries are always going to be note, denoted with lowercase letters that correspond to the uppercase letters of the name of the matrix. So capital A for the name of the matrix, lowercase a for a number within the matrix. Okay? And the way that we read this address is I want the entry that is in the third row, second column. Okay, so I'm gonna find the third row down, which is this row right here. I'm gonna find the number that's in the second column over, and that number is 19. Okay, let's do the same thing for the next entry. Uh, I want the entry that is in the uh, 41st position, which is the fourth row, first column. So count the rows down, one, two, three, four. So I'm looking at either the eight or the five. I want the number that's in the first column, which is gonna be this column right here. And so I want the eight. And then finally, we want a sub 13, so that is row one, which is the top row. We want column number three. Now, if you look at the columns, there's one, there's one. We only have two columns. There is no third column. 
So the number that's in the first row, third column is not possible. There is no number in that position. Next, we're gonna talk about adding and subtracting matrices. And there's a couple of things that I wanna note about adding and subtracting matrices. The first, is that you can only add or subtract matrices that are the same size. Okay, that's important. If the dimensions are not the same, then you cannot add or subtract the matrices. The second thing concerning adding and subtracting matrices is that you're gonna add or subtract the entries that are in the same position. Okay, so if they're in the same location in the matrix, uh, then you can put them together. If they're not in the same location, you cannot add or subtract those numbers. Okay, let's do a couple examples so you can see how this works out. We want to add the two matrices shown below. The first thing you need to do is check the size of the matrix, and that can very simply just be a visual inspection. If these matrices are not the same size, you're gonna be able to tell just by looking at them. Uh, this matrix here on the left has two rows, I'm sorry, three rows and two columns, and this one also has three rows and two columns. So they are the same size, and because they are the same size, their sum is going to be another matrix that is the same size, that is also gonna have three rows and two columns. Now all we do is just add this is an addition problem. We're just gonna add the numbers that are in the same position. So I'm gonna take the four, which is in the first row, first column, or the top left, and I'm gonna add it to the number that's in the top left of this matrix. So four plus six makes 10 for our first entry. I'm gonna do that now with the other numbers in the top row. So negative three plus eight is going to make Five. Now the first row of my solution is complete. Now I'm going to drop down to the middle row. So this five is on the left side of that middle row and it's going to add to the 21 which is in the same position. Five and 21 add to be 26. And now I'll pick up the 14 and the negative six to make eight. And then move down to the bottom row. 12 plus five is 17. And negative 11 plus zero is negative 11. That's a matrix sum, it's that easy. You just make sure they're the same size and you just add the numbers in the same positions. Next example, we're subtracting two matrices. It's the same thing, folks. If they're the same size, you can do it. So we've got two rows, three columns in both of these matrices. Um, all we're gonna do is subtract this time numbers that are in the same position. Uh, I'm going to open up another matrix that has two rows and three columns. And now just be careful with subtracting and negatives. That's the only thing really I think that is of concern here. So we're going to have 10 minus negative minus and a negative becomes plus. So 10 plus 4 is 14. The middle numbers are 3 minus 5, which is negative 2. And the last numbers on the top are negative seven minus negative, so plus one, which is negative six. Now move down to the bottom row and do the same thing. So three minus eight is negative five. Five minus negative, which is plus, so five plus 11, 16. Then negative two plus nine, which is going to be seven. That's it, that's adding and subtracting. Very intuitive, uh, just putting together the terms that are in the same position and, and it's no problem. Next thing we wanna look at is scalar multiplication. So first off, what is scalar multiplication? So scalar multiplication is just multiplying essentially by a constant. I was gonna write the word scalar right here, but I don't wanna define it with the word. Uh, so it's basically just multiplying a matrix by a single number, okay? And, and how do we do that?
Okay, so the way we're gonna do scalar product is you simply multiply that number, that scalar, to every entry within the matrix. It's essentially like a distributive property if you think of it um, in those terms. So, so that's it, let's walk you through a couple of examples of scalar products. All right, this first example, we have five multiplied by this matrix, this two by two matrix. Uh, notice we don't have to check sizes of the matrix because there aren't multiple matrices in this problem. There's just the single matrix. Uh, all we're simply gonna do is take this scalar five and we're gonna multiply it to every entry within this matrix. And so if I do that, it's not gonna change the size of our answer. Five times negative two is negative 10. Five times four is 20. Five times zero is zero. And five times three is 15. Simple as that, I think that's super intuitive. I think if I didn't even explain it, I think you'd probably end up doing exactly what I just did right there. This next example is a combination of scalar products and addition and or subtraction. So we're gonna put kind of everything together in this example. We've got a couple of matrices defined as A and B here. We're asked to find 4A minus 3B. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do, and I'm, just, I'm gonna go ahead and just write it out instead of go right into the work, but I wanna do four times matrix A minus three times matrix B, like so. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those scalar products. I'm gonna take four times all of these numbers to give me 12, negative 24, and eight. And now you have an option here, you can multiply this matrix times three and then keep it a subtraction, uh, or you can multiply this matrix times negative three and change this to addition. And I actually like that, so I'm gonna go ahead and show that. Uh, I'm gonna change this to addition, and I'm gonna multiply by negative three right there. I just, for some reason, I feel more comfortable doing matrix addition, um, but that's just my choice. Uh, so negative three times negative seven is positive 21. Negative three times four is negative 12. And negative three times 12 is negative 36. Okay, now we can go ahead and add those two matrices together. Uh, visual inspection does tell me that these are the same size matrix and because they're the same size, we can add them. So I'm just gonna add the numbers in the same position. So those top numbers, 12 and 21 are 33. In the middle, negative 24 plus negative 12 is negative 36. On the bottom, eight plus negative 36 is negative 28. And that is all there is to it. The final example problem I have for this video is a little bit different than everything else I've seen or shown so far in that I'm not being asked to add or subtract or do any scalar products. Here I'm asked to solve for the variables. Uh, I've got two matrices that are expressed as being equal to each other. And if I wasn't sure, I can look in this corner right here. I've got negative 12 and in this corner, same location, I have negative 12. That's also indicating to me that what I see on this side is the same as this side. And that idea is how I'm going to do the rest of these. So that means that this 3x plus 5 in the first row, first column here on the left has to be equal to 23, the number in the first row, first column on the right. That's an equation. 3x plus 5 equals 23. And we can solve that equation. Subtract the 5 to give 3x equals 18. And so x equals 6. Okay. Now we can continue this way with the rest of the, the entries. So over here on the bottom left, second row, first column, we have a 14. That needs to be equal to z plus four, which is the entry in the same spot. 
So I'm going to do z plus 4 equals 14. Subtract that 4 and we get z equals 10. And then finally, the numbers that are in the second row, second column, which is 7 plus 2y and 13, they also have to be equal. So I'll make an equation out of that. 7 plus 2y equals 13. I'm going to subtract the 7. So 2y equals 6. And so y equals 3. Okay, that's it for this first video on chapter two and matrices, your introduction to matrices, some vocabulary, some basic operations with matrices. Uh, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you have any comments or questions, please drop them down below. Um, that's all I've got. I hope to see you in the next video.